Hi, this is Melanie Fine with Chem and 10, and today we're going to talk about molecular shape and polarity. A bond is considered polar if one atom in the bond is more electronegative than the other. In this case with hydrogen chloride, we have this lowercase delta, the Greek symbol delta, indicating the delta negative says that the chlorine is more electronegative than the delta positive, the hydrogen. What does that mean? Since chlorine has a greater attraction for the electrons, the electrons are going to spend more time around chlorine, leaving the hydrogen relatively positive. So a dipole is when one side of a bond has a greater electron density than the other. So in this case, because chlorine is more electronegative, it's going to have more electron density. We write the dipole, the arrow facing the chlorine, where the greater electron density is, and the plus end of that arrow where the relatively positive hydrogen is. Even a molecule with polar bonds, though, may not be polar if the dipole moments cancel out. For example, here we have carbon tetrafluoride. Each of these bonds is polar. We've got fluorine, which is the most electronegative atom, so that the fluorines are more negative, they're more electronegative, so that the electron density spends more time around the fluorines than the carbon in the middle, leaving the carbon relatively positive. But because the dipole moments cancel out because it's a symmetrical molecule, the molecule as a whole is not polar. Polar meaning it has positive and, and negative regions. They, it's like a tug of war that has equal opponents on each side. The dipole moments cancel out. And this forms a tetrahedral shape, which is why it's it's, it's nonpolar, the tetrahedral shape cancels out these dipole moments, it's symmetrical. Another example, carbon dioxide. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, but since it's a linear molecule, these dipoles cancel each other out so that the molecule itself is nonpolar. Contrast that with water. Water, again, oxygen is the more electronegative atom so that the negative region of this molecule is more around the oxygen, leaving the hydrogens relatively positive. Because water is bent, the dipole moments don't cancel out like they do in carbon dioxide, leaving a net negative region and a net positive region, making water a nonpolar molecule. So let's look at the Vesper shapes, and I'll show you which ones are going to cancel each other out and which ones won't. Generally, the shapes that have no lone pairs will cancel each other out. So the linear shapes and the trigonal planar shape will cancel each other out as long as the, the three in the trigonal planar, for instance, if the three atoms attached to the central atom are identical, the dipole moments will cancel each other out and the molecule will be nonpolar. The same is true with tetrahedral, as we saw with carbon tetrafluoride, and trigonal bipyramidal. And there are some exceptions of, so I said that generally it's the shape without the lone pairs that, that is the um, symmetrical, the one that cancels out, but there are some symmetrical shapes with the lone pairs. If you have a steric number of five, um, but you have three lone pairs, you end up with a linear shape. And as we saw um, with carbon dioxide, a linear shape cancels the dipole moments out, as long as the two atoms attached to the central atom are identical. And the octahedral shape is also a uh, symmetrical shape, as is the square planar, which is what the, uh, the asteric number of six would, would form if it had two lone pairs. So these shapes are symmetrical. To summarize, the linear shape, the trigonal planar, the tetrahedral, the trigonal bipyramidal, the octahedral, and the square planar. If the atoms attached to the central atom are identical, the dipoles of these shapes will cancel out, making a nonpolar molecule. So let's look at a sample problem. Is ammonia polar or nonpolar? These are the steps that we have to go through to figure out if it's going to be a polar or nonpolar molecule. We need to draw the Lewis dot structure. We need to second of all determine if the bonds themselves are polar. Once we know if the bonds are polar, then we look at its shape. And if the dipoles are symmetrical, the shapes will cancel. The, not the shapes. The, the dipoles will cancel out, making it nonpolar. If the dipoles are not symmetrical, if they're asymmetrical, then the molecule will be polar. So first, let's draw the Lewis dot structure of ammonia. To do that, we determine the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one valence electron for a total of three electrons. So overall, ammonia has eight electrons. We draw ammonia so that the singular atom is in the middle. So we have nitrogen flanked by three hydrogens. Next, we draw the bonds. Each bond consists of two electrons. 
So now we've used six electrons of the eight. So we have two electrons to play with. All the hydrogens already have full outer shells because hydrogen is in the first period. And nitrogen needs two more electrons, and that's where the two electrons will go, right on top of the nitrogen, so that nitrogen has a full outer shell. Next, we need to determine if these bonds are polar. To do that, we look at the electronegativity. We can just do it by um, a trend, but, but in this chart we also have numbers. This chart is from Wikipedia. So we look at the electronegativity, electronegativity of nitrogen, it's 3.04, and the electronegativity of hydrogen, which is 2.20. So that difference is 0 0.84. And I have this chart that tells me whether that's a polar bond or not. And the chart says if I have an electronegativity difference from 0 to 0 0.4, it's really nonpolar covalent. If it's between 0.4 and 1.0, it's moderately polar covalent, like the hydrogen chlorine bond. If it's between 1 and 2, it's very polar covalent, like hydrogen and fluorine. And if it's greater than or equal to 2, it's, it's probably ionic. So in this case, it's between 0 0.4 and 1.0. So we're talking about a moderately polar covalent bond. So indeed, the bonds are polar. So then we have to determine if the shape cancels out those dipoles or if um, it leaves the dipoles intact. So to determine the shape, we need the steric number. That is really how many thingies are coming out of the nitrogen. We've got three hydrogens and we have one lone pair. So it's got a steric number of four. One of those steric numbers is contributed to by one lone pair. So we've got a steric number of four and one lone pair. We go to our chart. Steric number four says that the general shape is tetrahedral, but with one lone pair, it's trigonal pyramidal. I, I, I call it pyramidal. Some people say pyramidal. And if you notice, that means that the top yellow part is, doesn't exist. That's where the lone pair is. So it's an asymmetrical molecule. There's nothing on top. Um, so that, so it's asymmetrical. It's trigonal pyramidal, which tells me that the dipoles don't cancel out. So we have a polar molecule. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get more chemical bonding help and a free gift, go to purplebonding.com. This is Melanie Fine of Chem and 10.